Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Nish Kumar Singh and you are watching ISTQB Foundation Series. Uh, so far in this chapter 4, we have covered all the 10 techniques with understanding on the sample types of questions and what exactly can be asked to you in the examination. But from the point of uh, looking at the perspective of ISTQB, the sample questions wouldn't be enough what I've discussed. So maybe I would like to also give you an exposure on some of the sample questions beyond that in this particular tutorial. So uh, of course, this will add more value and more inputs in terms of preparing yourself. So kindly pay attention to this one as well, which would add a better understanding on the template questions. So we'll be just quickly moving to the same where we have the very first question on the uh, Equivalence partition, and here, if you see the question, uh, it's, it's about like yeah, they have been giving you with the uh, different ranges, as you can see, like up to 1000, it is a different uh, criteria like couch potato, uh, above 2000, uh, 1000, up to 2000, lazy bones, or something. So, it's just like a fitness tracker, or maybe a system which is just giving you certain ranges. And what they want to know at the end is which of the following sets of test inputs would achieve the highest equivalence partition coverage. So all I mean to say here is not mandatorily every time they ask you the number of test cases or always ask you to cover the classes. Sometimes they give you the values and they ask you to uh, make sure that, uh, you know, which covers the maximum. Now that would, would be really important to be taken care of when you look at this kind of exam uh, questions that is highest. So it's not mandatorily that they are looking for all the ranges to be covered, no matter it has different ranges. They just want to see that whether your ranges are correct or not. And the trick here involved is the word they use above. Above 1000 means it starts from 1001. So do not consider it from 1000. So always prefer to make your rough, quick rough table you know, prepare your own table and then uh, start evaluating the options. So here in this case, uh, uh, let me tell you the direct answer because for that you need to create a table and find out the same. So please, if you create the table, make sure that the ranges start from 1001 to 2000, then 2001 to 4000, 4001 to 6000, and 6000 and above, where it will be the last option which will fall under uh, with the maximum, that is four. Uh, ranges coverage out of uh, that's uh, five. So other ABC covers three ranges out of five. The next question is an example on boundary value analysis where again you are being given with some kind of system, some kind of application scenario and uh, you are provided with multiple ranges. Now again here they are not asking you anything like what are the boundary values, they are not asking you uh, what are the ranges or how does it fit into that. Now here they are asking you the BVA boundary value analysis uh, with the test inputs which would cover the maximum boundary values. So all you need to do is again of course in these kind of questions you can uh, straightforward move from the question itself. The values which are specified here are very to, to the point that uh, it has all the inputs, all the inputs in the sense the value which is provided to you in the question are the boundary values. So all you need to do is just evaluate quickly and see that if uh, these options really concern with the output values, uh, the boundary values are not. So if you see here, I have got A, 0, 11, 20, 22, 23 where zero is not a boundary value and 20 is not a boundary value, others are, but we only cover three. B, nine, 15, 19, 23, and 100, where nine is not a boundary value, 23 is a boundary value, 100 is not a boundary value. So again, we only have three boundary values here. C, uh, 10, 16, 19, 22, 23, all are boundary values. So C seems to be most relevant as of now. And 14th, I have got 14, 15, 18, 19, 21, 22. So 14 is not a boundary value, 18 is not a boundary value, and 21 is not a boundary value. So from the technique, you can refer that why the answer C is right, but obviously, uh, you know, that's where we talk about the boundary values, which are tested on the extreme boundaries of a range. So C is the best answer covering all the maximum boundary value. The next question is on the uh, decision table. So sometimes they give you the entire table and ask you certain cases to be given and then they ask you the query that what happens with the un ongoing activities. But uh, in this case, uh, what will be, they will be, they have given you the two test cases as of now, like for example, decision table testing is being formed on a speeding fine system. Two test cases have been already generated for the rule one and four. 
which are shown below. Given the following additional test cases, so they have created additional set of test cases, which two of the additional test cases would achieve the full coverage of the complete decision table when combined with the test cases that have already been generated with one and two. So what I mean to say here is if you see here, if you concentrate in decision table, when you have two conditions, we generally have four combinations possible. And here in these two test cases, that is R1 and R4, we have covered the true, true, and false, false. So the remaining two test cases must be the true, false, and false, true combination. Where if you come to the uh, pool of table, pool of test cases, what they've given you at the bottom is DT1, where you see they have just tried, slightly tricked it, like instead of giving you true, they have given you the value or like true or false term. They have given you the value. That's how they trick you around. And we just have to figure out that here it is, speed is greater than 50 is my condition. And all in to make sure that what is the speed here. So if you see it's more than 55, 50, then it is true, true. So DT1 is eliminated. Because I don't want to, to true, true is already considered in rule one. Whereas if I go with DT2, it says 44 and true. That means it is false and true. So good, DT2 is one of them where I wanted false true combination. And DT3, it says 66 and true. 66 again, which is a greater value than 55, 50. So of course, this is also ruled out. And then we have DT4, which is true and false. That means 77, it is more than 50. And false is the combination. So we got false true, true false to be tested together. So finally, the answer is C, which is DT2 and DT4, which would be added to the table to complete all the four combinations of two inputs. There's several other questions like this where we're talking about, this is one from the uh, state transition diagram, where they give you the diagram, something similar to what you see on the screen right now, and they uh, may ask you to uh, figure out with a particular flow. So the flow, what is provided to you here is uh, having uh, list of uh, the activities which can take place following the transition, but what they want to see is which of this uh, control flow covers the maximum number of transitions. So all we need to take here is, as of now, if you see in this diagram, there are 10 transitions. So we just have to count the number of transitions together. So say I've got up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are 10 transitions, and all I need to find it in these four options is to check that which option consist of or covering maximum transition in this. So I know the answer anyways because we can figure it out, but uh, let me just make it easy for you to understand that what exactly would be the right answer. So I've got off weight. So off weight in the sense this transition got covered. And uh, then I have uh, off to weight, weight to off. Okay, two, trickle, uh, weight to trickle. Okay, here, tr charge, high, and uh, that's... Uh, trickle to charge, charge to high, and uh, high to charge again, that's here, and then to low. So that means here. So if you see here, I've covered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are seven transitions which are considered as of A. So all you do is the similar way how I'm doing it right now to make clear that what is the coverage achieved with which option. So A has seven. Now B, uh, weight, trickle. So weight, trickle, that means this one again. So I'm using green color for the B option. Uh, again, back to weight, okay. Then off, all right. And then I've got weight back, all right, good. So we go with trickle. That is uh, from weight to trickle, trickle to weight. Okay, so weight, trickle, again it is a repetition, so you don't count it two times. Then you come to charge, okay. And then you say low, that is here, and from low to charge. All right here. So let's count the green ones now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is also seven. That means A and B are both covering the seven. So of course that could not be the answer because it has to be of course unique. So we cannot uh, pick them. Now let's go for C. It says uh, high. You, it starts at high. Okay, high to charge. I'm using a blue color for that. And then charge to low All right here. And then low to charge of course coming back. Charge to trickle that is here, and trickle to weight, that is here, weight to trickle again, that means coming back, and then uh, trickle to back weight again, that is a repetition, and then uh, to trickle, 
Okay, so that's like just looping in here for some time. And of course, that could not be because you, when a loop is involved, that means you're not trying to cover everything. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There are only six which are covered in option C. Now let's try with D with a different color. I'm rather using a, a highlighter to shade it all. So I'm trying with the option D where it is weight, weight to trickle. So weight to trickle in the sense this one. Then um, trickle to charge, trickle to charge, okay. Charge to high, that is here. And then high to charge, that is again back here. Charge to trickle, okay, trickle. Then trickle to weight, weight. Then it goes to off, okay. And off to weight. So as you see here, we are covering eight, which is the max of all these four options. And the right option is D which is covering the maximum number of transitions. So all I wanted to make you understand here is that there are typical types of questions which can be asked to you at any point of time. So we just have to be aware that how to handle these questions and how to solve it quickly. So these are the different ways by which you can deal with it by marking it, making some small quick notes, or maybe trying to roughly work on it and help it out. So that's one way how you deal with the sample questions. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching the video team. This was from the sample questions on the chapter four. I'll be starting with the chapter five soon uh, we just uh, need to make sure that i was just traveling so i could not upload the videos a few days uh, just two days uh, from today so i'll be continuing from here again so make sure that you follow the session i'll be having two more chapters to go ahead and of course making you all prepared with the examination so keep tuned with the tutorials i'll be coming back with the other one soon if you have anything beyond this, of course, uh, put it in the comment box so that I can help you and I can, of course, ad address those queries very well. So thanks for watching the video team. Uh, take care of yourself and keep watching the videos. Happy learning.